Hi, I'm Tim Tyler, and this is a video about the ultimate encephalization quotient. The term the ultimate encephalization quotient is intended to refer to the proportion of the bioverse that winds up being made of brain-like material after civilization reaches maturity. Currently, brain matter makes up less than a tenth of one percent of the biosphere. However, a number of futurists have suggested that intelligence will become a more prominent feature of the living world in the future. The importance and significance of intelligence is emphasised, and there is talk of Jupiter brains, Matryoshka brains, and turning the universe into computronium. Ray Kurzweil has written, Once we saturate the ability of matter and energy to support computation, continuing the ongoing expansion of human intelligence and knowledge, which I see as the overall mission of our human machine civilization, will require converting more and more matter into this ultimate computing substrate, sometimes referred to as computronium. Similarly, Hans Moravec has written, the final frontier will be urbanized, ultimately, into an arena where every bit of activity is a meaningful computation. The inhabited portion of the universe will be transformed into a cyberspace. There is some basis for such projections. Life's evolutionary history consists of a path towards incre increasing computation. Living systems started off with very little or no brains. Sensors and actuators were connected together locally without much in the way of a central processor. Then, brains were invented, and since then they've been proliferating on an exponential growth curve. Today, we see that trend at the point where it's producing enormous data centers all over the planet. Many believe that the expansion will continue beyond this for some time to come, creating larger and increasingly impressive cyberspaces. Of course, such large data centers require raw materials to produce, maintain and run, so in addition to all the computing units, there are a range of supporting sensors and actuators responsible for mining, construction, power generation and so on. This video is intended to draw attention to another relevant piece of information that bears on the issue. There is a pattern among living organisms where the lar largest organisms have the smallest brains as a proportion of their total body, body size. And there's another trend in living organisms to produce creatures of large size, a trend which has been interrupted in the past at regular intervals by meteorite strikes. Today's companies are not yet fully cooperative living organisms, but they probably will be in the future, and some of them will be very large indeed. Further out, there is the possibility of even larger cooperative organisms forming out of states and governments, and indeed possibly planets. So we can already see some very large organisms taking shape. However, we know that large organisms typically need small brains. If you look at a table of brain sizes, you'll see that the largest brains belong to the smallest creatures. Ants have the biggest brain in proportion to their body size. They come in at 6% brain. Then next of all, tree shrews and other small birds and mammals, 3% um, brain. Humans are around 2.3% brain, but humans have exceptionally large brains that are probably an anomaly in the table, but I've included them for completeness. Um, a lion is 0.1% brain, and if you go up to large creatures such as the blue whale, you find they're 0.01% brain, so large creatures have very small brains in comparison to the size of their bodies. There's a well-established power law that describes the relationship between brain size and body size, and the exponent is smaller than 1. It's something more like 0.66. So as a result of that, bigger animals have smaller brains. The idea that organisms in the future will be bigger, and that bigger organisms have smaller brains, suggests that we will see proportionately less brain matter in the future, not more. In the past, large organisms have not made up much of the biomass, since they've been dependent on food chains to support them. However, it seems likely that future organisms will internalize these food chains, effectively eliminating much of this biomass and concentrating it in the dominant organisms. Also, communication technologies have improved recently. Slow nerve impulses have been replaced by fiber optic cables and radio waves. These vastly increase the region of space which a centralized brain can control in real time. That makes the ant model vastly more practical. Today, we are seeing that model being enacted on our desktops. There are millions of dumb terminals all over the planet connected to enormous networks of servers in data centers. Networking technologies came along a bit after local computing power became available, and there is every indication that the world's servers are sucking the brains out of its desktops. If the trend for large organisms to have relatively small brains is to be taken seriously, then it predicts that we will see a future consisting of massive organisms with enormous brains that are nonetheless tiny compared to the region that they control. 
This discussion is concerned with far future events and so is necessarily speculative. However, overall, I am more impressed by the trend for large organisms to have small brains than I am for the trend towards organisms in general having more brain power as evolutionary time passes. Large organisms do have large brains, but they are small compared to their body size. We may see some very large brains in the future, but they will probably remain dwarfed by the mass of sensors and actuators in the robots that they control. What will all those sensors and actuators be used for, if not supporting the processing power behind the brains? They'll probably be used for growth and for reproduction. Um, enjoy.